the split decision was the best decision. With the Kingdom of Science now in a pretty major race against time, the recent split decision was the perfect call on behalf of Inagaki. Admittedly, I had no idea this was coming, but looking at the story now, I almost feel a bit stupid for not thinking of this. So, in this video, I'm going to explain why the split decision was the perfect call for strategy reasons and for the future of Dr. Stone. Be warned that this video contains major spoilers. Before I get started, make sure to comment with your thoughts on the split decision. I'll pick my favorite and share it as comment of the week in the next video. This week's comment goes to Sam the Gum Man for his excellent roasting skills. If you'd like more Dr. Stone and other manga discussions like this one, then make sure to subscribe and follow along with each week's video. Now, of course, the split decision I keep referring to is the decision made in Chapter 200 to split the kingdom into three teams. The Super Alloy Team, the Corn City Team, and the Pioneer Team. Or Teams 1, 2, and 3 in that same order. So, to get started, let's discuss why this decision worked so well in terms of strategy. And Tsukasa basically took the words right out of my mouth. This was a very deliberate way to make for the perfect power balance. Because as much as I hyped up the wise commanders in a recent video, that title basically means nothing at this point. At least not until everyone is back together. There are just too many characters doing too many different things across the world. At this point, there's going to be a lot more localized decisions, and we might even see more characters exercise some leadership now that the kingdom is split up. Which makes a lot of sense when you look at Super Alloy City. The two most important people there are, of course, Zeno and Tsukasa. Zeno is obviously staying behind because he's the rocket expert, but on top of the other fighters, we have Tsukasa and Matsukaze staying behind to keep the city secure. So, while Zeno will be making a lot of the big decisions here as the rocket expert, there's a good chance Tsukasa will exercise just as much leadership. Not only does he serve as a check against Zeno's influence, but Tsukasa is also the only other person in Super Alloy City that knows about immortality, which obviously influences the most important decisions. But now let's look at Team 2. And Team 2 is another example of very deliberate planning. We have Taiju, who is likely our best man for making corn, as his title of Farm King suggests. Plus, you know, I'm sure the thought of Taiju saving Yuzuriha might have occurred to our boys in charge. Next is Hyoga, in case there's any trouble along the way to Corn City. There's Luna, who, instead of serving as a medic for Senku's team, will surprisingly serve as a bit of a diplomat for when they meet Brody. Which, not gonna lie, I don't have the highest hopes for, but I'm gonna give our most capable gal the benefit of the doubt. Then, of course, we have Ukyo, who not only speaks English and Japanese and Morse code, but is the only wise commander not with Senku who will most definitely be acting as a leader for Team 2. Now, on top of his value as a leader and someone capable of teaching Morse code, I think part of why Ukyo is on Team 2 is similar to what I mentioned about Tsukasa. Based on this panel, it's heavily implied that Ukyo heard everything about immortality. Assuming this is true, that would mean each of the teams has at least one person that knows about immortality. So, like Tsukasa, this means that Ukyo would be able to make important decisions concerning immortality if he needs to do so. And that leaves us with the Pioneer Team, and no, I don't mean those weird fish who ate coral and thought moss pointed towards civilization. I'm talking about the best and the brightest of the Kingdom of Science. Basically, everyone Senku absolutely needs to explore the world. We got four of the five commanders, Dr. Suika and Dr. Chelsea, our crafting expert, the world's best butler, and of course, Kohaku. Cause what even is Dr. Stone without Kohaku? The funny thing is, it only takes a few seconds to realize that Team 3 is basically all of the most popular characters, which only further supports the idea that this is the dream team right now. Not that everyone else isn't important, but well, let's just say the bench will be nice and warm when Senku and his team come back. But in all seriousness, the lineup for Team 3 makes a lot of sense from a general standpoint. Not considering all the strategies we just mentioned, just look at it from a writing point of view. One of the pros to reading Dr. Stone is that, with each new destination, the team manages to add a bunch of new characters. The downside, unfortunately, is that these characters tend to either sink or swim. They either continue to play an important role in the story, or they just sort of stick around and slowly become irrelevant. And as much as I hate to say it, none of the characters are safe from this. If you ask me, I'd say Mozu and Kirasame are two of the best examples. 
They're both cool characters that help build the immense hype of Treasure Island, but once that arc was over, they just got added to the increasingly long list of fighters. And that's just it. Unless they have a highly valuable skill like Kaseki or Dr. Chelsea, a lot of the new characters that get introduced slowly fade into the background once they've pretty much fulfilled their purpose in the story. Again, it's not that any of them are bad characters, they just eventually become irrelevant. Another example of this would obviously be Nikki. After fulfilling her incredibly niche purpose of teaching Gen how to impersonate Lillian, Nikki really didn't have that much to do. But that actually brings me to my point about why splitting up the characters makes so much sense. Not only does it help Inagaki to play Senku's team at the front of the story, but it also allows for opportunities where the characters in the background can actually shine. Because, as we all know by now, Senku can't be everywhere doing everything at the same time. I mean, maybe if he invents a cloning machine or builds robots of himself, but I wouldn't count on it. Instead, Senku often delegates jobs to the other characters because he can only do so much at once. He did it when he trusted Nikki's team to manage Corn City, again when he trusted them to make diamonds, and then another time when he needed their help to beat Zeno and Stanley. And because Senku can't be in Corn City, it's given Nikki and the other characters more opportunities to perform on their own. In fact, Nikki seems to be acting as the leader for everyone in Corn City while Senku is gone. And this is exactly why splitting the characters into teams works so well. Senku's group was able to move on to South America, the narrative still focused on the events of their missions, but Nikki and the characters in the background were given a new purpose, meaning that they had more opportunities than before to perform on their own. So while they aren't following Senku at the moment, we basically see these characters just as much as before. On top of that, they become more relevant to the story as Senku gives them more responsibility. And we can already see this happening again. Senku's team took up the lion's share of chapter 201, and the narrative will almost certainly follow this pattern for the foreseeable future. But 201 also showed us glimpses of the other teams. In fact, this is probably the most action we've seen from Ukyo since Treasure Island. Many fans have complained for a while now that Ukyo just barely makes the cut as a commander because he's always such a passive character. But now he's teaching Morse code, responding to Y-Man, and will soon be leading the mission to Corn City. All that while he's pretty much in the background. So on top of all the genius strategies we talked about earlier, this is why the split decision works so well. Not only does it allow the narrative to focus on Senku, but it also makes some of our favorite characters more important than ever before. And that's it for this discussion. If you enjoyed this discussion, then make sure to like the video. Also make sure to follow me on Twitch, where I discuss Dr. Stone and other Shonen Jump chapters every Sunday. And if you'd like more Dr. Stone and other manga discussions like this one, then make sure to subscribe and follow along with each week's video. Thank you for watching, and I hope to hear from you soon.